Lights, camera, action. When a script is written that is so bad, no one will film it. These brave podcasters will bring it to life just so they can mock it. This is Table Reads. So the movie's kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Table Reads with Sean McBee, Jeff Lewis, and Joshua Baker. Episode 102! Welcome Welcome to to Table Reads! I'm Sean. That Um, beer is Josh. That's Josh. And the quiet one is Jeff. My name, Jeff. Yeah, you had all the energy. You took it all and then yelled it into the He's line. been saving it up all recruit, this time. Yeah, he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and now those of those people watching the video can see us. I forgot to switch it over. Whatever. There they are. Yeah, they're over there. Look at us. See? The, uh, see, you don't know I'm drinking a beer. I got my koozie. Yeah, what beer am I drinking? So, um... I lost my place in my script. Okay. So, uh, you know what? Without further ado, let's just get into where we've been. Previously on Table Reads. So, we started at Bilbo's 111st birthday, and we were given a lot of antics by a lot of characters. Antics, in this case, that were received in lieu of any attempt at giving characters actual personality, motivation, or franchise. The Hobbits literally set off for Rivendell on a moment's notice, despite having no idea that they're in danger. They are pursued by black writers that were not given any reason to understand why seeing these writers scares them so much. Luckily, they meet a guy with a broken sword, who they immediately trust completely for no reason. And good thing, too, because he leads them to the edge of Rivendell, where he and some elves defeat the Black Riders by giving them a bath. Before you yell at us, we know who the guy with the broken sword is, but anyone whose first exposure to Tolkien is this movie is not going to have a clue. When we left off, our heroes were standing within sight of Rivendell, watching the goo that was once the Black Riders ooze down the river. Fade in. Interior, the Great Hall, Rivendell, Day. A slimy rivulet of dark blood oozes out of the wound in Frodo's shoulder. Frodo lies on an enormous circular table. His feet face toward the center. All right, I got the, I got the iPad on the screen now. Hey, it's right on me. His feet face toward the center is the thing that I read before I lost my place. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought I, I thought I could find it again. Got it. While I was saying it. Not so much. Uh, ah, with his head. While his head rests at the edge of the table. His inanimate body, stripped of clothes, is covered with leaves. Leaves. Yes. Leaf clothes. Around the wound. There are greens, but as they move further away from the wound, they become autumnal, gold and umber in color. The ring on his chest is just visible through the leaves. The enormous circular table is made of solid crystal, and embedded under its surface, that is misspelled, under its surface is an historical relief map of Middle Earth. Above Frodo's head, on a throne, is seated a tall figure. His face is ageless, with sad gray eyes. Upon his head is a circulet of silver. He is Elrond, King of the Elves, Lord of Rivendell. Seated around the table are the sages, kings, and warriors of Middle-earth. Bilbo, Sam, Merry, and Pippin are seated on one side of Elrond, and on the other, the ranger. Beyond the table, tears rise up and upon them are elves, who are wailing and swaying in unison. Above the tiers of elves, the walls of crystal curve up, forming a dome over the great hall. The flames of an open fire at one end of the hall reflect upon the ceiling. High above, an elf, yet another one, 
holding a mirror, deflects a beam of sunlight down to an elf who stands by the table and who, in turn, reflects the beam with his mirror onto Frodo's shoulder. Like the end of Legend? You remember? All the mirrors? Oh, yeah, the mirror scene. <laughs> That's how they beat Tim Curry. They <laughs> have all really the mirrors. Good. That was really good improv on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, yeah. With the mirrors. The mirrors. You know, reflection. The, I, the mirror scene. I've seen Legend. Legendary day out there, I say. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the movie where Will Smith fights vampires. Am I a legend? <laughs> <laughs> I am a legend. The dog seems sad. <laughs> a trickle of black liquid oozes out of the wound and runs down Frodo's arm and onto the table, forming an inky pool. Gandalf leans forward to examine the wound. Wraith essence. Lord Elrond, Frodo fades still. A tremor of reaction shows in Elrond's utterly still countenance. All right, all right. For this scene, I want you to keep your face totally still. Don't move it at all. But I want a tremor of reaction still. Go. More countenance. (laughs) (laughs) You're giving me nothing. A wave of dismay ripples through the hall as Gandalf's words are passed around. The humming chorus of voices picking up the words, repeating them rhythmically, becoming a background to Elrond's speech. Here lies Frodo, the ring-bearer, pierced by a blade of the nine black riders, the ring-wraiths, servants of our common enemy, Sauron, lord of Mordor. The wraiths have been vanquished, but from their foul essence. Alas, a new form shall rise again. The hobbit lies now in the twilight of the wraith world. He begins to fade, his arm first. If we cannot halt the rotting of his blood, he will pass into the service of Sauron. Strong indeed has Sauron become, that this wound defies the healing power of the elves that his life be lift uplifted and float upon a sea of song. The chant of the elves has gathered in intensity. Their hands wave and shake in a tormented dance. Sam cries out, joining the wailing of the elves. Mary and Pippin are drawn into the surging movement as if at a wake. Thrilla, thrilla. Frodo's arm is becoming transparent. The bone is quite clear beneath the translucent skin. Elrond rises and motions toward a young girl about 13 years of age, who is passing her hands through the flames of the great fire. In one hand, she holds a long, thin blade. Summoned by Elrond, blade in hand, she moves to Frodo. Dark Dark are are these times. times. The The power power of the the elves is waning. But at twilight shines an evening star. It is our Lady Arwen, who, out of love, will yield all help to the halfling, will keep no hope for herself. Over the chorus, Elrond's voice booms out. Gimli the Dwarf, Lord of the Axe, come forward. Should my daughter swoon or cry out, strike off the arm. Gimli... A dwarf bearing an axe with a harsh, shining blade rises and comes up to the throne. Better music. Arwen stands above Frodo's head, her knife ready to cut into Frodo's wound. Behind her stands Elrond. He leans over and tenderly kisses his daughter. Got a Trump situation going on? She's just holding a knife. There's a fucking elf with an axe ready to chop his arm off. He's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah. he's like, how do I make this weird? <laughs> <laughs> Gimli raises and lowers his axe above Frodo's arm. All right. Oh, what? That's a dick move. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> my axe is getting heavy. <laughs> Measuring the arc of it. The chorus begins to undulate, chanting in a low-pitched hum of expectancy. 
Arwen plunges the blade into the wound, skillfully opening it up. A gasp escapes the hobbits. <gasps> Arwen probes into the black hurt. Elrond watches his daughter anxiously. Oh my god. <laughs> For a moment, Arwen seems to falter. Her mouth twists into a cry, but no sound comes. The chorus cries out for her. The arm fades further. This sounds like a stage play. Yeah. Like, oh no! no! Like, like, also, I love that plunge the knife skillfully in oh, the yeah. sentence. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow, he's so good. It's like, ah! She stabs him with a surgeon's precision. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get a nasty tumor out. <laughs> <laughs> with a shiv. Right. <laughs> It's just a sharpened of, toothbrush. Yeah, a sharpened toothbrush. <laughs> Got you, homie. Nine out of ten surgeons and dentists are free. <laughs> Even the leathery faces of the ancient kings betray anxiety. The hobbits scarcely dare to breathe, while for an endless moment, Arwen cuts deeper into Frodo's flesh. The voices of the elves subside to an Ululating murmur. My God, what's a ululating? Un that's undulating. That's that's a good band name. Ululating. Ululating murmur. Ukuleleing ululating. Ululating murmur. <laughs> ululating is like what uh like Indians do. The <laughs> oh, shit. Is that what that is? <laughs> no. Native, also Native American. It's called a ululation. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm not lying. <laughs> That's true. Is that really a thing? Yeah, it's like a sound that that goes up and down. That's a real word. Yeah, yes. Oh, okay. Wait, hold on. Then, then what? Hold on. Kelly. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> what's the? I don't know. What's the? Where are we? I want to see the uh, you, the voices of the elves subside in the Udalini murmur. So they just like they start whispering like. Woo 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 woo. Give me a definition thing. Well, that totally fails. Alexa. Wait. Yeah, I muted her. Oh. Ha! <laughs> Damn it, Alexa. Not again. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um, I learned so much on this podcast. I this is like the most pretentious script. <laughs> <laughs> They're just going down with a thesaurus. Just being like, Yes! Still unquivocal. He's British. And remember, they're writing it in Ireland in a room oh, wallpapered true. with the book. Yeah, the book the book is pretty Sure, I'm just arcane. I don't know. Even in even in England, I don't think they're like, ah oh, that that well, police cars just won't stop mutilating in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> wee -wee 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 -wee. <laughs> Can you believe that ululation? That ululation's too much. This is a bad neighborhood. Right. <laughs> Uh, talk to the inspector. Gimli's axe is about to cleave down as Arwen swoons, but she recovers and Gimli forbears. <laughs> Woo! <-hoo. laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't hold back. He forbears. That's right, and she swoons. Oh, 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 huh. Oh. Oh. Not one. I almost chopped it, one, but allow two. me to forbear. Not three bears. Four bears. The Gross. tension is unbearable. <laughs> See what you did there. No, that's actually in the script. Yeah, no, no. Uh. <laughs> but it, it was my inflection no, you, that you sold the bear joke, Jeff. Great bear joke. God. There's it five is. bears. It, it bears repeating. Do it again. <laughs> uh, I'm barely getting through this. Oh, no. This is why they came here working the bear podcast. <laughs> Suddenly. A powerful young warrior springs to his feet. Boing! Oh, I'm warrior. Um, I'm guessing this warrior is going to be Boromir. You. Who's Boromir? Which one? The Sean one that, Bean! The one that dies. Oh, fuck, that's me! <laughs> <laughs> Enough! How long shall we fuss over a ring and a sick hobbit? Murmurs of anger greet the outburst. Arwen remains impassive. I, Boromir. <laughs> Sorry, hold a second. What? That's that's how people talk. <laughs> What's your problem? That fucking got me. Oh, like, oh <laughs> my god! Yeah, more like a number two double stack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start doing that. Sean. I, Sean. <laughs> First of his name. 
I, Sean, <laughs> humbly Skype you into this call. <laughs> Welcome to my internet for mode. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I, Boromir, forsook my people. Forsook, yeah, forsook my people who alone stand in arms against the enemy to be at this council. For ten days and nights I rode, and two great horses died under me. Lord Elrond, did you summon me to sing hymns over a halfling? Gandalf raises his hand to silence him and moves across to whisper in his ear. Boromir, the life of Elrond's daughter hangs in the scales. This is a struggle, a test of strength. Between the power of Sauron and the power of the elves, if Arwen fails, the hobbit will fall under the dominion of Sauron. Boromir looks suspiciously at Gandalf. Then we should take the ring. Take it? You take it, Boromir. (laughs) You take it, bitch. You take it, Boromir. Boromir. I am Boromir. I want a ring. I'm here to forsook. (laughs) Gandalf's words are intense. A challenge. Boromir leaps on the table and and crosses to Frodo. (laughs) Arwen and Elrond remain absorbed. Boromir reaches out his hand straight towards the ring. An unseen force holds him back. Boromir's face strains with effort. The sinews rise on his arm. At last, Boromir withdraws his hand, defeated. The hobbit is a pebble pinched between two great rocks. The fuck does that mean? Shut up! (laughs) (laughs) Thou shalt not squeeze through rocks. It means get off the fucking table, Boromir. (laughs) Arwen still probes inside the wound. She extracts from the wound a dark splinter and holds it aloft. A joyous cry sweeps up from the chorus. Frodo stirs. The impetuous Boromir leaps onto the table with a great shout of victory. He's already, he got down, I guess. He just just (laughs) leapt back onto the table. Nobody stays on there when people talk about the pebble between the rocks. Oh, pebble, (laughs) shit, shit, fuck. I didn't didn't realize about the pebble. I, Boromir, am leaving the table. <laughs> oh, I'm back up! <laughs> He's getting up. He's getting up. Get on the table. Get on the table. <laughs> Sam and Bilbo start forward, hope springing in their hearts. Frodo awakes to the exultant singing of elves. He opens his eyes and sees his friends above him in a dreamlike swirl of confused faces. I think I was I Pippin. I was Pippin. I think you were maybe Mary. No, he's Mary. I was Mary because you're I'm, Sam I'm, and you're Frodo. I'm Sam. Was I Sam? You're Frodo. No, no. I'm Frodo. You're Frodo, Frodo. Then you're Sam. Okay, I'm Sam. Y'all had the two All right, big cool. ones. Yeah, All right. yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Pippin doesn't talk a lot, so I'll take Pippin. That's why I've got him. Oh, oh, you got him. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna be dying soon. Let me read my guy through, and we'll swap out later. <laughs> 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 Death gurgle. Frodo will live! Frodo hears this while his swirling vision slowly subsides. He lifts himself up a bit and sees a distorted image of his arm returning to normal, and at the end of it, holding onto his hand, Sam, his eyes shining. Hello, Sam. It's warm. M- meaning your hand, Mr. Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> Frodo sits up, his vision still hazy. He sees Bilbo. Bilbo, I never thought. Bilbo (laughs) laughs happily. Frodo sees the awesome figure of Elrond as though reflected in rippling water. Awesome. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly what I was thinking. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) So awesome. Damn. Yeah, that's coolest. I want to be that guy. He's got like a vintage rock shirt on. (laughs) Woodstock. (laughs) He's smoking a joint. <laughs> he wakes him up holding the skateboard like, you all right? <laughs> I was there, Gandalf, 3,000 years ago when Wavy Gravy made the announcement about the brown LSD. <laughs> I've been riding that wave ever since, man. <clears throat> Elrond is speaking and Frodo strains to hear what he is saying. Gradually, the face grows clearer and the voice stronger. 
Frodo finds himself sitting at the round table. Elrond is making his opening speech, and the council has begun. And the rings of power were forged by the elven smiths, but Sauron ensnared them. He learned the secrets of the elves and betrayed them, and in the mountain of fire, he secretly forged the one ring to be master over all the rings of power. Singing begins in a sad and heroic mode. In contrast, cymbals and hand drums strike up a fanciful marching rhythm. I've never seen a script where they're like, all right, you know, let's just describe the musical score in the script. But contradicting itself the entire way. Yeah, it's sad and heroic, sad and heroic. but there's also like cymbals going... But it's marching. <laughs> you know what? For, so then for you, this next... You know, you know like a, a a sad and heroic marching So for this, this, band. this song, let's do all three different things all at once. I want to I say, like, we're reading the same words, but I just wanted to do it in different cadences. I'm well, here, why, why don't we just do this? Ooh. Just play all the music. Like, go high-pitched. Go like sassy, and I'm gonna go like really gruff with it. Yeah, just play sassy. three. Sassy. Yeah. All right. All right. Ready? Three rings for wait, the. Wait, 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 wait. He's gotta go too. Oh, okay. He's doing high pitch. You're sassy. Like. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna do baritone. <clears throat> three rings for the elven kings under the sky. Seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. In the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie, one for the Dark Lord on his throne, one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them. That was perfect. That was perfect. You're welcome. See, we know how to take direction. Y'all want, yeah, so y'all are doing great. I, I, I feel proud of this and moment. I've also just learned that. There are only so many tracks you can play on this thing at once. Because at one point it stopped letting me play shit. I feel like we evolve. Your, your soundboard especially evolves every episode we do. Every, every episode. Like you're like, come back like, I downloaded eight more things. Every script makes us better. It was Here's the thing. You, you, I can't download any more music because uh, YouTube is getting copyright flags on all our score. And so if I have more... I, I, I have it all legally, yeah. but I have to look up what song it is by listening and comparing and going, okay, here is my license for this song from my service. That sucks. That's a ton of work. Yeah. So if I have a whole bunch more, then it's just more shit that's going to get flagged. And it's copyright free fucking music. This no, is, no, he bought it. He yeah, owns, this is all like the licensing, universal so. licensing. Yeah. But their bots like are oh, this sounds like our song. Oh yeah, yeah. they're they're claiming it. The, the bots are just claiming. I get you. That yeah. sucks. So that I I, sucks. I have a legal right to all of this music, but it gets flagged. It doesn't get pulled down. It's just like uh, you can't make money on this, and we don't have enough subscribers to monetize it anyway. But I'm thinking about the future. The future. Because we only just got started on YouTube. It's true. Well, when we when we get big enough, you just send out some songs and like I'll just hum them and then you put them on your sound. <laughs> like this is like. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, fun story. My first radio show um, that I had when I was eighteen. Why did you not keep playing? YouTube um, cut it off. Mm-hmm. That's not what we wanted. Yeah, that, there we go. Now we're just in the lobby. It's the fabulous uh, night. Oh, we oh, we yeah. did a uh, uh, TV commercial that we played on like local. TV in the middle of the night. Wow! And it uh, for the music for it to avoid any copyright issues, we just hummed "Ode to Joy." <laughs> the two of us just going. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. It's cool. That's some grassroots shit. I love it. <laughs> so you know your your idea. I already did twenty two years ago. Yeah, shut it up. It wasn't broken. <laughs> <laughs> shut up, Jeff. Play the classics. <laughs> While the voices chant, a group of actors in costume and masks. I don't remember that from the book or the movies. Well, the whole well, Sean. To be honest, all of them are actors in costume. Yeah. <laughs> Pineapple. <laughs> He's just describing the behind the yeah. scenes. <laughs> the hair girl comes over and touches up Elrond. He's like, and he's like, in this scene, Viggo Mortensen comes. <laughs> 
What the hell? A group of actors in costume and masks, a motley assortment representing the beings of Middle Earth, mounts onto the table in corta cortege. Cortege. First come the elves, preceded by a ring juggler. Oh boy. Oh, just oh why? Oh, it gets better. Keep going. Oh, oh wait, ring no. juggler! I'm juggling the rings of power. Wait, let's wait for the next juggler. <laughs> Performing deftly with three glass rings, shimmering with colors. Then follow the dwarves, led by a midget juggler, who fares badly with seven rings being... Harassed? Is that harassed? That's harassed. By a dragon? Yeah. Which other dwarves attempt to fight off. So, midget juggler... Okay, if a ring juggler juggles rings... <laughs> Would it not stand to reason that a midget juggler is juggling midgets? Yeah, but how tiny is a midget dwarf? Like, like, no, like they're the a dwarf. quarter. It's a quarterling. Yeah, it's gotta <laughs> be like this fucking yeah, so, big. So we've got dwarves and hobbits. Where does midget fit in yeah, why in is, Middle Earth? Yeah, why is it a midget? Why couldn't it just it's, be a dwarf? It's super yeah. impressive that this baby is juggling seven rings. They're like, God damn. Fucking, and, and Frodo's just laying on the table like, what the fuck is happening? Then come the men with a woman juggler. Oh, boo. That's Jeff. Jeff's the woman juggler. I am woman juggler. I juggle all the womans. Uh, uh, I just got to keep all my bitches happy. I sway like a belly dancer. Swaying like a belly dancer <laughs> with nine rings rotating on her arms and like, okay, here's, here's what's going on. The first juggler uh, has the rings of the elves. That's, those rings are representing the, the elven rings. The midget juggler has seven rings. Those are the rings of... Uh, the dwarves? The dwarves. The dwarves got seven rings. And then uh, the woman juggler, ironically, has the nine rings of man. Why does it... This is all... Who, what? He's Why? Doing, he's doing a, like, symbolic... Okay, Elrond is like, hey, guys, the ring of power is coming... Now's the time to do the play that talks about the forging of all the rings of power and the one ring to rule them all. All right? Places! Right. Places, everybody. Places. Yeah, but it's like Elrond's like, listen, he's like, you have to take the, the ring. The fate of the world is in our hands. We must act to destroy the one ring. But first, a show! <laughs> he's, like, he's like, listen, Frodo, we have to keep this away from the power. He's like, Keep one away from the power. Like, Ugh. Bring in the jugglers. <laughs> you know how to get it. <laughs> oh. and the jugglers like, it's our time. Ah. With nine rings rotating on her arms and legs, the juggler is a beautiful woman, but one side of her costume portrays a withered body in decay. Why? What the fuck is happening? This just gets weirder. Wait, the next paragraph just is gets amazing. Weirder. A Do it. A small mongrel dog jumps onto the table and runs wildly around barking. A character who is a combination of <laughs> Mick Jagger and Punch leaps onto the table. What yeah, the fuck is this? I wanted to watch his soul <laughs> leap is, onto the page. <laughs> he is dressed in white in a strange robe of pleats. And whenever the pleats splay open, dark, garish colors burst <laughs> forth. A harsh musical beat accompanies this character. He, Sauron, struts menacingly around the table. The others retreat in front of him. Who wants to sing the Sauron song? I don't know who. I'll, I'll do it. Fuck it. You gotta be Sauron. I am so wrong, <laughs> Lord of the One Ring. I covet the three, I long for the seven, I lust for the nine. To find them, bring them, rule them, bind them. The chorus repeats a <laughs> counter chant. Rings of power, rings of power, rings of power, power etc. Why didn't you just make a musical version of this? <laughs> it would be awesome. It would, this is this amazing. Would be, it would be so good. It's Who a movie has, within a movie. He has Sauron in an Elvis jumper of many colors, <laughs> dancing and singing. Oh, I was supposed to sing it like Mick Jagger. Shit. <laughs> moves like Jagger. He's got the moves like Jagger. I'm so on. <laughs> so on. <laughs> You're in the one way. <laughs> this is insane, Brown guys. Sugar. This is... I don't even know what's happening. It keeps going. 
This is fucking this really is amazing. Weird, Give me dude. more Sauron singing. I'm fucking. <laughs> I was born for this. <laughs> <laughs> With one hand, Sauron. Ba Obviously, this is not really Sauron, <laughs> though it would be great if it was. Oh, he's playing basketball. This is uh, an actor portraying Sauron. And what if it's the real Sauron? This is how he got in. Spoiled <laughs> <laughs> you guys. <laughs> no one would suspect me to be to sneak in as an actor portraying myself. It is <laughs> I, Sauron. <laughs> it's like Chaplin entering the Chaplin lookalike contest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With one hand, Sauron bounces a transparent ball. <laughs> the, the Harlem Globetrotter. Bounces a transparent ball around, which a golden band is wrapped. The dog barks at him, wanting to play. Perversely, he throws the ball among the legs of the actors, and the dog bolts after it, retrieving it, growing, vi growling victoriously at any hand or leg attempting to touch it. A play has begun. The no stage shit. is the table. The what? acting is stylized, emphatic, as in the Kabuki theater. <laughs> oh, Je Jeff loves that it's Kabuki now. This is my favorite, I'm back in. <laughs> The costumes, are flam <laughs> the costumes are flamboyant and symbolize beings and entities of Middle-earth. The voices of the elves in the background function as a chorus. The outstanding characteristic of the play is the dog, forever playing and performing with the ball, the ring, and recognizing none of the players as his real master. The dog symbolizes fate and also the ring's own will. You can say that on the page, but I am not going to see that on the screen. There's no fucking way I'm going to see that on the screen. Unless you're hey, well, a fucking douchebag. Yeah, no, Sauron's, or uh, Elrond's like... Just like... <laughs> just eat a whole, like, mouthful of, of acid before you watch the movie and go, Dude, the dog symbolizes fate. And also the ring's own will. My chair is melting. <laughs> Look at Sauron balls, man. <laughs> <laughs> And then you find out you're just watching Muppets Take Manhattan. <laughs> it's the Lord of the Rings, man. Bro, the TV's been off for an hour. <laughs> also, you're in the bathroom. With me. <clears throat> Frodo is increasingly fascinated and finally obsessed by what he sees and hears. Oh my God. Sauron... Always playing with the dog, <laughs> struts up to the eleven juggler. Elven. Who? Oh, to the elven juggler. <laughs> I didn't want people to get confused. I'm in this already scene. confused. <laughs> and none of none of them have been referred to as elven before. There's this is a new one. Ring midget woman and now elven juggler. That's probably the the juggler with the three rings. The first one. The elven juggler who, in an act of bravura, whoa, makes his three rings vanish under my penis. Meanwhile, Elrond is explaining because someone fucking needs to do it to. as an MC, like the Greatest Showman. He put on a fucking show and just be like, ah, the, the fairest, fairest rings, rings of power. power. There you go. The elven lords hid them from him, and his hands never sullied them. And so today we keep our knowledge and power. Yes. I'm really glad we're streaming this one. This is exciting for me. <laughs> At this, applause breaks out in the audience. <laughs> and for a moment, Elrond is touched with emotion. <sighs> because he's a diva. Sauron approaches the dwarf juggler who is fighting the dragon. The juggler becomes afraid and nervous. He drops his rings. Sauron laughs and picks them up. <laughs> Seven rings of power and dwarf kings possessed. Three Sauron took and the others the dragons consumed. The power of the dwarves faded. Sauron struts up to the woman juggling the nine rings and starts to dance lasciviously in front of her in a different rhythm, distracting her from her performance. <laughs> she becomes entranced by him. The rings fall to the floor, and Sauron picks them up, laughing triumphantly. <laughs> and for each ring he picks up, one of the men goes into convulsions and emerges as a black rider. Ooh. 
Frodo goes pale with fear as he is reminded of his terrifying encounter. The he, nine rings. He just needs to look. He just needs to learn expecto patronum, and he'll be fine. Is For real? It, is this? Agreed. Is this? I, I, y'all are gonna hate me, but I now understand the backstory of Lord of the Rings better than when you guys told me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the power of interpretive dance worked on me like an asshole. <laughs> like I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, oh, I oh, get it. They I were humans, it. and as he took the wait, ring, do you understand it better, or do you think Sauron is a dancer? <laughs> He's not Mick Jagger. Are they a separate thing? <laughs> The nine rings of power which belong to mortal men fell under the dominion of the one. And the nine men who bore the rings fell under the dominion of Sauron. And they became the ring race, his most terrible servants, the Black Riders. Oh, they need those up good. Now on the table are two groups facing each other, circling around, ready for battle. This table is big. It's, yeah. It's like the size of a Taco Bell. They knew this was coming. On the one hand, Sauron, backed by his nine wraiths. And on the other, a group of elves and men. The two sides eye each other, ready to pounce. Mm. Sauron defiantly bounces the ball and makes the dog perform, and edges slowly toward the other group. From the Melnin elves, two actors stand out. I am Elendil, king of the ancient Minas Tirith. <laughs> Minas Tirith. That's what I said! <laughs> awesome. I am Gilgalad. <laughs> Gil- yeah? Lord Hot. Of- I-, I thought I said light lord. Oh, don't be lord, lord of the, the Minas Tirith. Lord, like, lord, lord of the flies. <laughs> I am Gilgalad, high lord of the elves. We have gathered a great force on the slopes of... Mount, Mount Doom! Doom. Mountain, Mountain of Fire! Fire. It's like a, an elementary school play. <laughs> Still you, Gilgad. To, to stay the murderous hand of Sauron, which wields the One Ring. Ooh. Men and elven warriors attack the raids, while Elendil and Gil... Gilgalad Gilgadad. rush <laughs> Sauron. <laughs> Elendil is pierced by Sauron's sword, ooh, and ooh. he throws himself at Sauron as Sauron turns toward Gilgalad. Oh! Sauron falls back onto Elendil, who, under Sauron's weight, crashes to the table, <laughs> and Elendil so- Elendil's sword snaps in half. That's, this is that's where that's they got the busted-ass that's, that's sword. sword. Yeah, yep. yeah. From Elendil. Gilgalad dives onto Sauron, impaling himself on Sauron's sword. Sauron is trapped. That doesn't sound he's, trapped. He's trapped under the dead body. <laughs> now my sword is... Now I got you! <laughs> <laughs> Try manipulating me now! <laughs> now I'll never play with your dog. Got your sword. Hmm. <laughs> 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 The ball rolls out of Sauron's hand, and the dog picks it up. Sauron is pulled away by the fleeing wraiths and looks back, agonized, as the dog runs off with the ball, playing and yelping. Wait, is... Is Isildur not in this? I don't think I haven't seen This is where Isildur is supposed to cut the ring off his hand And, and take it. You can't have Isildur's dad. Is the dog Isildur? Maybe the dog is Isildur and has He's, been this whole time is, because Isildur represents fate and I don't know. Isildog? Isildog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Throw it into the fire! <laughs> <laughs> Two dancers undulate a length of blue oh. cloth to oh. represent a river. The dog goes under it, puts down the ball, and goes to sleep. And the ring was lost. It fell into the great river and vanished. There in the dark pools, the ring passed out of knowledge and legend. And the three elven rings were released from the dominion of the one. And peace reigned for many years. The elven juggler steps onto the table, performing with great dexterity and grace. The sunbeams, shining down, refract ever-changing shimmering light patterns through the three rings of glass. 
Meanwhile, under the undulating blue cloth, two creatures, a large fish in each of their mouths, crawl across the table. The hand of one falls on the ball and the side of the sleeping dog. A silent fight begins between them for possession of it. You see what I have to deal with? You're doing great. I'm blocked by I'm the, the river. Audio. I'm the river. Uh, the, the, they're doing this, I think, right? They're yeah, like wagging between blue them. Cloth. We are the blue cloth. I am the, that's really hard to do for a long time. <laughs> then, Tarzan-like, from out of the darkness, Sauron swings onto the table. Ah! <gasps> ah! <gasps> <gasps> He is attired in a negative version of his previous costume. Costume change! He compulsively <laughs> moves his hand and arm as if he was playing with the ball. He dances to a harsh beat. <laughs> Here comes Sauron <laughs> in another husk! <laughs> in this new body of fate, I have stepped well beyond hate! <laughs> At the same time, one of the creatures kills the other and makes off with the ball and the dog, <laughs> muttering, <laughs> Bilbo, seated at the table, points excitedly. Gollum, he doesn't look like that. <laughs> Sauron continues to dance and growl his song. <laughs> he edges in on Gollum while whirling a bull roarer. What's a bull roarer? Don't worry about it. <laughs> the bull roarer is in the shape of a sockless eye. Get it? <laughs> and makes a sinister drone as it spins. The eye of the bull roarer flashes with light when caught by the rays of the sun reflected from above. Onto the table come two grand figures in wizard attire. One cloaked and concealed in a great white mantle, the other in gray, made up as Gandalf. Oh. From over the seas, two great wizards appeared in Middle-earth in the guise of men, Saruman the White and Gandalf the Grey. They were messengers sent to contest the power of Sauron and to unite all those who had the will to resist him. But they were forbidden to match his power with power or to seek to dominate elves or men by force or fear. The real Gandalf looks uneasy. The white wizard begins stalking Sauron and in doing so cannot avoid falling into imitations of his dancing, prancing strut. Oh, I love it. Dancing, prancing, strut. He's like doing this thing right here, and he just can't help himself. He's like, ah. <laughs> See? Gandalf pets the dog, who wags his tail, but always returns to the to play ball with Gollum. Sauron stalks Gollum, who retreats, horrified, to the edge of the table, nearly falling into the audience. The dog snarls at Sauron, as at everybody else. Hmm. The elven juggler has a difficult time continuing his performance because of the confusion of actors and the rotating bull roarer. Sauron has nearly cornered Gollum, and Gandalf and Saruman are closing in on Sauron. The wizards collide into each other. Saruman throws open his cape and pulls his phony beard over his head. It looks like a flowing blonde hair, and he behaves like a, femini a femme fatale. Mm -hmm. Saruman grabs Gandalf, and the two roll around the table. Mm. Ooh, Saruman, I'm already You want me to do it? I'll do it. <laughs> Seductively. Somebody's got to oh, ooze sex to me. Saruman, I'll do it. All yeah, right. ooze sex, baby. Here we go. Ah, Gandalf. Let's join forces, old friend. We should wield the one ring. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> While rolling on the floor in order to pin down Gandalf and seduce him, Saruman can't help glancing up at Sauron repeatedly and mimicking his movements. Don't trouble to say we, Saruman. Only one hand at a time can wield the one. <laughs> Saruman becomes helplessly caught in Sauron's dance, and Gandalf cries himself loose. He who studies the enemy too closely becomes too close to the enemy. Sauron has nearly cornered Gollum, when from behind, where Bilbo is seated, an actor made up as Bilbo, but much younger, steps on the table, skipping across it, singing, The road goes ever on oh, and on. It. The ball falls accidentally into Bilbo's hand. Gollum goes for him. Bilbo with a bland smile on his face, turns and holds out his two clenched fists as if Gollum had to guess in which hand the ball is concealed. 
Gollum, dismayed, points at one hand. Bilbo pirouettes around once and holds out his hands again, which are now crossed over one over the other. Bilbo opens the hand at which the Gollum has pointed. It is empty. Bilbo skips away, playing with the bell and the dog. Sauron is after him, and so is Gollum, but Bilbo is oblivious. He just skips happily away. Then a hand trips him up. It is Gandalf. He is standing at the edge of the table. He catches Bilbo, pulling him off the table into his arms, and retreats. In retreating, he reveals the real Gandalf, who stands up to speak. <clears throat> And so the ring abandoned Gollum, only to be picked up by the most unlikely person imaginable, Bilbo of the Shire, my very dear friend. And the enemy is getting stronger. Boromir leaps to his feet. Stronger and stronger, Minas Tirith stands alone in arms against the mighty Sauron, pointing to the... Oh. Sorry. Pointing to the broken sword on the table. That is the sword that was broken and lost. For a dream spoke such that if the sword of our ancestors was found, we would regain the glory of once. The ranger stands up proudly and draws the two halves of his sword. Here is the sword that was broken. Who, who is this that bears the sword of Elendil? They stand, glaring at each other. This is the ranger who saved us from the Black Riders. A lonely ranger, but he is also Aragorn, son of Arathorn, and he descends from Elendil. If we quarrel, the laughter of Sauron will be our only reward, and I feel that his evil eye is already upon us on this council. But Sauron lacks the One Ring, pointing to Frodo. What that? With that, his power will be complete. Rhetorically, to Elrond, can the ring be kept here in Rivendell? Sauron can torture the very hills. I have not the strength to withstand the enemy, when all else is overthrown. Could it not be hidden? Chance already plucked it once from the riverbed, and his creatures would search it out under the earth or at the bottom of the sea. Gandalf shudders, still speaking rhetorically. B but can he? We can. But can we not wield? No, we cannot use the ring. The ring belongs. Oh, hold to on. When did Gandalf become the one that doesn't know shit? After the theater. So I thought I had a real solid grasp on everything, but now the play has confused me. Can we beat him up with his own ring now? He's trying to deflect from the, the orgy that he had with Saruman. <laughs> He's like, oh, 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 the, the ring. <laughs> Charles. Sorry, go ahead. We cannot use the ring. The ring belongs to Sauron and is altogether evil. The very desire to wield it corrupts the heart. Elrond pauses. Nobody speaks overcome by the tale of the ring. Then a gentle voice speaks out. We cannot keep it. We cannot hide it. We cannot wield it. That's Arwen, by the way. Which one's Arwen? The daughter? Yeah. yeah. Word. Word. But it can be destroyed. And there is only one way. It must be sent to the fire in which it was forged. To the fire of Mount Doom and the heart of Mordor. Land of the enemy. Elrond looks piercingly at the members of the council. Each one averts his eyes. Then Bilbo bursts out in a ridiculous voice. Very well, Master Elrond. Say no more. I know who you're thinking of. Bilbo, the silly hobbit, started this affair and... But he cannot finish. Frozen by the stern looks of Gandalf and Elrond, he shrivels in his seat. All eyes are downcast. Nobody dares to speak. Frodo glances around the table. A thought seems to well up in him. Very quietly, words break from his lips. I will take the ring, though I do not know the way. Table Reads will return after this brief word from our sponsors. 
What's up, docs and docettes? Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic here, and if you like old cartoons and watching online reviewers dissect them, then you probably said the same thing I did about two years ago. Hey, what the fuck? Here, watch your language, you bud. Every Saturday morning, I do a brand new commentary of a Warner Brothers short. All throughout the month, I do video essays examining the history of these cartoons. Catch my videos on youtube.com slash Ferris Wheelhouse 2, or just use the hashtag Looney Tunes Critic. And now, here's Eric Bauza, the new voice of Bugs Bunny. <laughs> You've been listening to the Looney Tunes critic. Ain't he a stinker? Lights, camera, action. So the movie's kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Now, back to table reads. So it just occurred to me that we've only read one scene, and it took 49 minutes of this podcast yes, to do so. Yes, a 50-minute musical act. That that was unbelievable. Yeah, it was. Now I know all about Lord of the Rings. I don't know why any of that happened. What? It. Where did the actors go? Like, they just brought in this performance out of nowhere. They must have been rehearsing for weeks. Frodo was dying. What if the surgery didn't work? Like, he'd just die, and then they dance around his body. Like yeah, There's just like, a bunch of actors in the back, like, no, the fucking audience died. Fucking Elrond just sits down. No, no, no. It's, We're it's still getting paid our, our union rate, right? This uh, explains this half. explains why in the previous episode, why they didn't explain it. Like, yeah. we were missing that part He's of like, the beginning. He's oh, like, oh, we're, we're saving all this for <laughs> Rivendell. Classic cinematic move, they interpretive said, dance. They said, show, don't tell. <laughs> yeah, yes! <laughs> and boy, did they put on a show! <laughs> I, Saruman. Dude, the fucking almost sex scene between Saruman and How did he become Randall? Saruman the White? Ah. Oh. You know, he was thinking like, okay, you remember, you remember Hamlet's play? from Hamlet from Shakespeare watch this we're hold so my fucking our, beer we're so ahead of our time hold my pint <laughs> how could this backstory be told but through interpretive things I like that there was a dog Musical theater. a very well trained dog the dog drink was fucking great he played <laughs> and, and, and why he's like the dog plays fate what maybe he has like a little sweater that says fate yeah the dog's name's fate fade in ruining all this time exterior landscapes of middle earth day a great open landscape of trees and hills against the sky walking in line are nine figures of differing shapes and sizes we we gotta fucking break shit it failed different shapes and sizes jeff <laughs> Superimposed across the scene is the face of Elrond, itself a landscape, its beard flowing into the grass, its hair entwining with the trees. He speaks. And the fellowship of the ring shall include all peoples, hobbit, elf, dwarf, and man. Oh, but fuck the midgets, right? No midgets. No. Only grown dwarfs. <laughs> Another landscape. Open downs, waving grass. Aragorn and Boromir stride along, side by side. Frodo, walking between them, has to break into a run from time to time to catch up. Boromir, seeing this, lifts him on his shoulder. For the men, Aragorn shall guard the ring bearer. He is long in exile from his own land, a ceaseless and lonely hunter of the servants of the enemy. Boromir, too, shall lead his mighty arm at least as far as Minas Tirith. Lend. Minas lend? Lend his arm. Shall lend his mighty arm. Shall lend his mighty arm at least as far as until Minas, <laughs> until he Minas gets Tirith? I don't know. How, how do you say it? Minas Tirith. It's Minas the, Tirith. The okay. great white capital of Gondor. I don't know how to read. It's yep. not a real place, it's made up words. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Table Talk at Words. <laughs> <laughs> Table Talk at Words. As far as Mick Jagger's. Yeah. Until his bus stop. Now they walk through an oak forest. As the fellowship threads its way between the trunks, Legolas walks across the treetops, gliding from branch to branch. He is a lean figure with a keen, clear eye. 
clad in leathers and leaves with a silver bow and quiver across his back. He scans the sky. For the elves, Legolas, the tree elf lord, for he can read grass and leaf and will thread a safe path through all places where the roots are long and the years lie thick on the leaves. Now they move across rough, boulder-strewn country. Great outcrops of rock are twisted and tortured into ominous shapes on all sides. Gimli the dwarf has taken up the lead next to Gandalf, and I forgot to turn on the script. There you go. Sorry, viewers. <laughs> uh, he stops and puts his ear to a rock and listens. For the dwarves, Gimli, lord of the axe, his ear shall lend... His ear shall tell the rumors of the earth and guide the ring bearer through the dark places of the mountains. A soft valley with meadows and a stream. The four hobbits are in gay mood, cavorting and laughing. They run and tumble together in some childish game. The other members of the fellowship plod on soberly behind. For the hobbits, besides Frodo, his servant Sam shall go for his loyalty and love. And Merry and Pippin shall travel for friendship's sake and for the honor of the Shire. Gandalf turns his weary old face to watch the hobbits at play. He frowns. Mm. And Gandalf the Grey shall lead the fellowship, and his wisdom and his wizardry shall aid the ring bearer to his destiny. Gandalf speaks to himself as he watches the hobbits. Is it madness to send this hobbit? Elrond's face appears again superimposed on the landscape, its contours blending with the countryside. The hobbits appear to be running and jumping across his cheeks, climbing over his nose, sliding down his chin. Ew. He answers Gandalf. Is it madness to send this hobbit Gandalf? Then folly must win where wisdom fails. Gandalf looks away from the hobbits and his eyes turn inward. Elrond has faded from the landscape. They trudge on. The play is written. We may, we may prompt more players, Elrond. You and I. Nothing more. Merry and Pippin have come up to Gandalf as he mumbles this. They are flushed in high spirits. They exchange mischievous looks. Pippin glances up importantly at Gandalf. Are you talking to yourself, Mr. G Master Gandalf? Can I add one thing before we continue? So the beginning of this was garbage, right? We were bored. We were like, oh my god, we're trudging through. This took a fucking dive into experimental shit right after they killed those fucking Black Riders. Like, this is... They went, like, a surgery scene, some questionable incest, like an entire vaudevillian play, and then a superimposed face, like, giving the rundown of who everybody is. Dude. But yet, somehow being there so that the hobbits can, like, slide down the contours of his face. And then him and Gandalf have, like, a shit-talking competition <laughs> that other people can hear, but not the other side of it. So it's just him being like, yes, we've written the play. And they're like, <laughs> what? Well, so so Pippin great. comes up, and he's like, are you talking to yourself? He's like, no, I have Bluetooth in, motherfucker. Right, right. This is experimental <laughs> filmmaking. It's like, like wizard Bluetooth. Time. This is crazy. It is 1970. Yeah. Everyone is on drugs. Yeah. yeah, but nobody was pushing shit like this. This is just a fucking hodgepodge rhapsody of filmmaking. You know You know what this reminds me of? The Monkeys movie Head, directed by Jack Nicholson. Just balls to the wall, complete and utter psychedelic Right. Like, I could be Jack, see Jack Nicholson and be like, has anybody ever held a camera like this? <laughs> like, it's like, he's a genius. Gandalf, taken by, bleh, taken by surprise, looks down at him. In the company of fools, the wise man seeks counsel with himself. What a dick. Merry and Pippin laugh and skip on ahead to join Frodo and Sam. The hobbits are some way ahead of the others and come to a point where the rough road divides. They hesitate and look back at Gandalf for guidance. But something attracts Frodo's attention on the left-hand fork. And Arwen shall be a light in their hearts to guide their way. Frodo points excitedly ahead. He sees a vision of Arwen in a white gossamer dress. She smiles and beckons him on. 
The hobbits run excitedly up the left-hand path, but as they come closer, Arwind fades and disappears. Aragorn, Boromir, and Gandalf reach the crossroads and halt. Which is the safer path, Gandalf? Gandalf looks quizzical. He smiles mysteriously. I suggest we follow the halflings. <laughs> Gandalf takes his own advice and walks on. Boromir makes a face that says he thinks Gandalf has lost his senses. Mm. Aragorn shrugs and follows. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Listen to the wizard talking to himself. Why not? Too Evening. much of that pipe weed. <laughs> a brooding landscape of rock shapes and clumps of trees. They walk through it. The hobbits are quiet now, a little frightened by the ominous surroundings. Mary clutches Gimli's arm and points at a lifelike shape of rock. Could that be a troll? Gimli shakes his head reassuringly. I hear nothing but the night speech of plant and stone. Boromir overhears their exchange, and with a dramatic war cry, he draws his sword and leaps in the air. Oh! With comic exaggerated gestures, he challenges the troll-like shape and pretends to slash and strike at it. Then he clutches his stomach as though wounded and pirouettes crazily, falling down in an agonized parody of death. The <laughs> hobbits laugh delightedly. What the fuck? <laughs> he just stunned on this fucking troll. Like he's like, oh, uh, uh. <laughs> you know, why not have this whole pantomime scene? We're only trying to squeeze 3,000 pages into two and a half hours. Ah! <laughs> Boromir falls. Leaves fall. Water <laughs> flows over rocks. Rain beats on the faces of the Fellowship as they walk. Wind waves the wheat. Wind blows the hobbits' hair over their faces. Meanwhile, Elrond's face and voice weave in and out. Dying and living and growing and waning are caught in the struggle. For the many are part of the one, and not leaf nor pebble, nor fire nor water, nor earth nor air, shall escape evil if the quest shall fail. Roots of the tree are fantastically entwined in rocks. The travelers are camped, cramped, no camped, under it. A fire burns. They are spread out around it. Gimli and Legolas sit together, looking at the roots and rocks. Frodo is tired, but he listens to them keenly. There is the meeting place of dwarf and elf, tree and rock. And you see how the roots, given time, was... Hmm. You do it, give, it, give it like a condescending... Yeah, my Legolas sounds like my Frodo. Hold on. And you see how the roots, given time, will split the very stone. Stones may crack, but the tree will perish. That's good. I like that. I like that combo. Frodo tries hard to keep his eyes open. Yeah, he sounds less like a pirate in yeah. that line. Yeah. <laughs> You've got my chimitar. <laughs> oh, did you see me fucking troll the troll? <laughs> and my cutlass, her. <laughs> uh, Frodo, Frodo tries hard to keep his eyes open. He glances at a don't like that one. He glances at a gap in the trees, and there, to his surprise, is Bilbo working at his desk, surrounded by his books and a little bed. Bilbo looks up and smiles at Frodo. Still trying to finish the book about my adventures, Frodo. It passes the time. The time doesn't seem to pass in Rivendell. It just is. Does it not seem to pass? Because... That musical number seemed like it took forever. <laughs> you know, I was stuck. <laughs> but now... <laughs> now this bed just carries me everywhere, and I'm in the middle of the road now. <laughs> he looks rather sad and sniffs back a tear. He gets up and beckons to Frodo. Now you're off on your own adventure. I want to give you this. LSD. It'll make everything make more sense. Take it. Hold on, just one second, guy. Yes, sir. Is that me? Uh oh, am I off? Sorry, I had an error on audition. Error. We didn't lose anything. Yeah. Hooray! Oh, it'd have been a shame to have to read all that again. <laughs> <laughs> he picks up a small sword and shows it to Frodo, who walks into the little study. The blade glitters cold and bright. 
This is Sting. Ooh. It's rather special. The dwarves gave it to me. Bilbo drives it with very little effort through the thick manuscript he is writing. Why would you do that? What is, what is it? He just stabbed his book. With drugs? <laughs> what? Wait. It's this a, is Sting. It's a sword. It's a sword. Oh, I thought it was drugs. Why did you? Because he's like, you know, now you're off on your own adventure. I want to give you this. <laughs> like, and I was like, that sounds like no. I like said LSD, and you were just listening. Maybe that's what it was. I went with that. It's story. Bilbo, not your dad. I thought he. Whoa! Was, no, my dad never <laughs> shared drugs. <laughs> <laughs> he was a dick. <laughs> uh. Bilbo drives it with very little effort through his thick manuscript he is writing. He draws it out again just as easily. <laughs> Frodo's eyes bulge. You've been working he's on a, that shit for years. He's a fucking he just... psychopath. <laughs> You're next, Frodo. Bilbo is pleased with the effect. He hands it to Frodo with a sigh. I shan't want it again, I expect. Oh, I almost forgot. If there are any orcs about, the blade glows with a blue fire. Very useful. Bilbo looks frail and old and lost. The two hobbits look into each other's eyes. Then, with a cry, Bilbo hugs Frodo to him. Goodbye, Frodo, my dear. Then he holds his nephew at arm's length. His face is trembling with emotion, and a strange, haunted, hungry look comes over it. He grips Frodo's shoulders. Dear nephew, let me see it just once more, before I die. What the Frodo looks acutely embarrassed. Reluctantly, he pulls out the ring and holds it up to Bilbo. He just unzips his pants. Bilbo's trembling hand reaches out toward it. Frodo feels a growing revulsion for the old man. He pulls the ring sharply away. No, no! No, that's me. Oh, my bad. No! No! That's right. Yeah. Nah. Frodo's nah. voice has strength and authority. Bilbo snaps out of the spell and is himself again. I'm sorry. Sorry you have come in for this burden. Don't it... Ventures ever have to end? I suppose not. Someone else always has to carry on the story. Frodo is back by the campfire, fast asleep. Bilbo's voice drifts away. It is dawn. Boromir is shaking him awake. Frodo opens up his eyes. The ring has fallen out of his tunic and is hanging free on its chain. Boromir is looking at it with a kind of embarrassed grin. Frodo jumps up in alarm, wrenching free of Boromir. He hastily stuffs the ring back under his tunic. Steady now. Time to go on. He moves to shake up the others. Aragorn and Gandalf are already on their feet surveying the morning scene. The nine are tracking over a flat, barren, rocky land. The hobbits are out of breath. The sun shines fiercely. Legolas spots something in the distant sky. He points to it, a small black cloud which is growing larger. Gandalf follows his gaze and motions to the companions to take cover. They scatter to the sparse rocks and bushes. Aragorn and Boromir grab the hobbits and pull them into hiding, flattening themselves to the ground. A great flock of birds is zigzagging across the sky, wheeling and circling as if searching the land. Their shrill crying becomes louder tell unbearable as the flock of birds passes overhead. As they cross the sun, the whole land darkens and becomes a pattern of speckled patches of light and shade. The hobbits bury their face in the earth. For all things bird and beast, tree and rock, are falling under Sauron's dominion. His tentacles search out and scour the land. As the birds pass over, the hobbits lie quite still under their cloaks almost merging into the color of the ground. Over this, Arwen's voice is heard. Wear these cloaks, for they will turn away the sight of unfriendly eyes. As the hobbits are back in Rivendell, Arwen and the elf maids are fitting cloaks on each of them. Are they magic? <laughs> magic. Thus do men and hobbits hang words on things to cover the truth. What else is it? Then she... You fucking stuck up bitch. <laughs> it's Prada. It's like it's magic. It's like, oh, 
we it's don't, light bending nanoparticles. It's we pr- don't put words on everything. <laughs> <laughs> we dance. <laughs> We've got a pl- we've got a play lined up for this. Bring in the juggler! Bring in the jugglers! <laughs> I want the lady juggler. Ah, this is a real magic. Then she gives them each a little parcel of food containing thin cakes wrapped in leaves. Mary looks at his disdainfully. Taste one, Mary. Mary does so with a sour face, but it quickly transforms to pleasure. He takes another bite. Quite amazing. No more. One cake will keep a traveler on his feet for a day's march. Is this way bread that is spoke of in elf legends? It is called lembus in our tongue. Eat it only in need. She smiles and strokes Mary's hair. It tastes like... like... He gives up, defeated. Like any food you think of while you're eating it. Fade out. So I wanted to end at like a solid break point, but you, you found he, they keep flashing back to yeah. Rivendell and then coming back to now without yeah. any Actually, we just, specific scene breaks. We're literally so, just one, two, three, four, five, six lines in a row just say food. We have not completed two scenes in this episode of Table Reads. Bah, bah, bah. And oh I... My God. I went ahead. If you watch the video, you can see me go ahead several pages. And I did not find the next scene. So I was just looking for a stop point because we got places to go and we've already run over on this episode. It's like, I'm trying to find it. I'm looking for it. So much more. I love this. Oh, he's so searching for it, looking for it. Favorite part, guys? The musical. Everyone's favorite part. There is wrong answers. Definitely Mick Jagger, Sauron. I feel like that needs to be uh, the Dude, dancing Sauron. Sauron's a dancing queen. I love it. If you, it, you when you make the cover for this episode, that's what it needs to be. Mick Jagger as Sauron, <laughs> like with the yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. Like, yeah. With his with his arms up like yeah. this and the eye between them. <laughs> so what the fuck. <laughs> and a dog and a little baby juggling. Dude, definitely my favorite. So. That is it for this episode, really. Um, you guys, though. Do you, uh-oh. My buttons don't work anymore. <laughs> You're getting old, man. I, I can't turn the iPad off or, Got him. or put your email address up on the screen. So, um, who knows who this guy is? I don't, I don't even know who I am when I wake up anymore. Josh, where can people find you online? Uh, me at joshuajbaker.com. Shoot me an email. I do I do voiceover work. I do videography work. Uh, you know what? I can probably fix your air conditioner too. Would you please? <laughs> this is right. so fucked can, up. Can I can I make a request? You can edit this out. I'm doing it at the end. How many patrons would it take for us to reenact? To, for us to reenact the uh, musical bit from the script? Put a number on it, real quick. All right. Uh, ten. We get, Whoa, that's totally achievable. I'll make a video. We'll make a video. Yeah, we'll post it up. We get 10 patrons, and we will reenact that <laughs> whole thing. <laughs> Come on, internet. Don't let me down. Yeah, you don't have to edit that. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So um, that's 10 patrons from when this airs. Oh. Ten, 10 new patrons, not just 10 total. 10 new patrons, and we'll do it. Yeah. All right. I'm stoked um, about this shit. So for more Table Reads, go to tablereadpodcast.com. Um, you can also find us on Twitter at The Table Reads, on Facebook slash Table Reads, and on Instagram at The Table Reads. And um, we say things on those things. So He's not wrong. until then, um, we're, we'll miss you. This podcast was created by Sean McBee. For more, visit TableReadsPodcast.com. Cut to black.